Ryata is confused by a girl dressed as a rabbit who suddenly comes to his house without any clear reason, only stating that she hates low-level individuals, which includes Ryata, who is stuck at level 1. He wonders if the rabbit girl has been in the world he currently resides in for a long time, but it seems that she might belong to a rare species, given that most inhabitants are humans. The rabbit girl attempts to attack Ryata, but he doesn't feel any pain or injury due to his S-rank HP level. She finds it hard to believe that someone the size of a human can withstand her attacks and gives an example by attacking a random adventure until they bleed from her assault. While diverting the rabbit girl's attention, Ryata asks her the reason for coming there. The rabbit girl is curious about the large carrots Ryata obtained and how he managed to gather so many in an instant. She becomes even more interested when she sees a uniform pile of carrots on the dining table and Emily holding one of them. Initially, Ryata planned to stop the rabbit girl from eating the carrots, but he changes his mind as Emily invites her to dine together at their home. Emily plans to prepare a dish using the carrots she obtained. She peels the carrots and slices them thinly like noodles before boiling them. The sauce will be made from carrot leaves and peels, and she will mix it with the boiled carrot noodles to create a three-color carrot dish with carrot sauce. As a side dish, they will have miso soup with bean sprouts and carrots. The rabbit girl seems extremely impatient to taste the meal, and finally, they all sit together at the dining table to eat. While trying Emily's homemade soup, the rabbit girl shows great delight in the taste and praises it as if it's divine. Ryata also understands the rabbit girl's feelings as he too enjoys Emily's delicious cooking. After finishing the dinner, the rabbit girl suddenly leaves without saying where she's heading. Emily and Ryata are puzzled by her behavior and haven't had a chance to ask for her name. Despite that, Emily feels grateful for meeting Ryata, as she enjoyed the shared meal. For a long time, Emily had been used to eating alone in the dungeon, and Ryata also relates to the feeling as he used to dine alone in his previous world after coming back from work and always felt lonely. In the morning, Ryata returned to the Nihonium dungeon, hoping to find something new, whether it be weapons or anything else he could acquire on his own. When he encountered a zombie monster, he tried to fight it with a sharp bamboo weapon he had been using until then. However, the zombie proved to be slightly stronger and managed to withstand Ryata's attacks. Suddenly, the bamboo weapon broke under the force of the powerful zombie. As the zombie's attacks had no effect on Ryata, he decided to fight the monster barehanded. Eventually, he defeated the zombie and obtained an item drop called Attack Up on the second floor of Nihonium. After picking up the item, the rabbit girl suddenly appeared before Ryata, begging him to find some carrots for her. She threatened Ryata that she would kill him if he didn't find the carrots. Ryata agreed to help find the carrots but asked the rabbit girl to wait for him at the Swallows Nest Adventurers Guild until he finished his business on the second floor of Nihonium. After searching for carrots to sell, Ryata arrived at the Swallows Nest Adventurers Guild to meet the rabbit girl and give her the carrots. Other adventurers warned Ryata about dealing with her, stating that she was very dangerous. Urza, who came because of the commotion centered around Ryata, was surprised to see the rabbit girl at the guild. Urza explained to Ryata who the rabbit girl was. Her name was Callous Leader Eve, a powerful adventurer with extraordinary abilities. She was known for her Excalibur technique, capable of splitting rocks into two, and had earned a reputation as a carrot expert in Seacrow and the surrounding dungeon town. There were certain carrot levels that only she could obtain. Her slogan was death or carrots, meaning she wouldn't hesitate to kill someone if they gave her carrots she didn't like. Since the carrots obtained by Ryata were even higher level than Eve's, Urza dared to raise the price to twice as much, specifically for Ryata's carrots. The Swallow's Nest Guild would do anything to get them and was willing to pay 15,000 kilo per carat. With normal calculations, if Ryata got 30 carats in just one day, he could earn 450,000 kilo in a short time. When he vast for the last carat to take home, Ryata couldn't give it to her because it had already been bought by the Swallow's Nest Guild. Angry at not receiving the carat, Eve attacked Ryata. However, due to his increased physical strength, Ryata could now withstand her attacks, and he promised to give her carrot the next day. Ryata and Emily had just finished hunting carrots on the second floor, carrying a bag full of them. However, Ryata heard the cries of other adventurers who were battling a drowsy slime. 
A male and female adventurer looked extremely exhausted while fighting the slime. Curious, Ryata tried to observe them from a distance to see if they were alone or if there were others with them. As he heard the voice of an elderly person, it turned out to be a senior adventurer guiding the two exhausted adventurers mercilessly. They had been deprived of sleep for two days and were not allowed to rest, as the cruel senior believed it would make them grow stronger. Witnessing this treatment reminded Ryata of his past job when he was alive, where he was always given impossible tasks, no rest breaks, and no leaving early, making him regret the situation. Emily, curious about Ryata's observation, tried to inquire, but Ryata chose to divert the conversation to avoid suspicion. Emily then invited Ryata to have lunch inside the dungeon. The enticing food prepared by Emily attracted Eve, who arrived shortly after to join them for the meal. Emily had prepared extra food so that Eve could also partake, and she had even made a carrot pudding that excited Eve greatly. Ryata tasted the food, which seemed to be a new creation by Emily, and found it to be delicious, perfectly suited to his taste. Feeling peaceful and relaxed while enjoying their meal together, they were unexpectedly approached by the elderly adventurer and his two disciples. The senior adventurer believed that Ryata was a bad example for other adventurers, as he thought that lazy adventurers couldn't obtain high-quality atom drops. Eve found all the senior's words meaningless and immediately gave a halved carrot to the exhausted disciples to eat. The disciples were thrilled by the taste of the raw carrot. The senior adventurer couldn't accept this and wanted to attack, but Eve deliberately held him by the neck, warning him that if he continued mocking Ryata, it would be his life at risk. They eventually left after being threatened by Eve, and Ryata expressed his gratitude for being saved. Eve returned to enjoying the delicious carrots given by Ryata. Emily was happy to see them enjoying the meal together. Ryata returned to Seacrow to sell the carrots with Emily at the Swallow's Nest Adventurer's Guild. Urza, who was counting Ryata's carrots, was pleased to see such high-quality produce. However, due to the increasing demand in the market, Urza suggested buying a magic cart to carry more drop items than Emily's backpack could handle. Finding the advice sensible, Ryata followed Urza's recommendation and went to the magic cart shop. Upon arrival, the shop owner suggested a modified magic, knowing Ryata's nature of coming to the dungeon for money-making purposes. The price of the cart was 10 million PLO, which Ryata found difficult to afford. He considered saving up to purchase it in the near future. As he was about to head back home, Seacrow was suddenly attacked by wild gorilla-like monsters that entered the city. Many adventurers hesitated to fight since there were no drop items to be gained, deeming it not worth the effort. Thus, most chose to flee rather than engage in a battle without any rewards. Urza, who fell after running away, was nearly killed by the gorilla, but Ryata managed to hold off the monster's attack and immobilize it. Even her companions, who had arrived to face the gorilla, also struggled due to the vast difference in strength. However, Ryata couldn't bear to see Seacrow destroyed and decided to fight the gorilla, with Emily providing support. As the gorilla was about to strike Ryata with a large rock, Emily acted as a decoy, drawing its attention and even her team attacked, breaking the rock it held. Spotting an opportunity to strike, Ryata leapt at the gorilla's face and delivered a powerful punch to defeat it. The city's residents were saved by Ryata's swift and decisive attack. Urza thanked him for saving the city. After the battle, Ryata heard a drop item falling from the gorilla. He asked Emily if wild monsters don't usually drop items, and Emily confirmed that they generally don't. However, Ryata was convinced that the gorilla dropped something. When he examined the item drop, he was extremely surprised. What exactly was the item dropped by the gorilla?